been very active uh, facilitating and coordinating programming at our church already. And in fact, when I first got here, I think you were on your second iteration of living the questions and <laughs> helping to <laughs> organize that for our congregation. Um, in 2009, she was ordained as an elder. Is that is that the right year? That's I don't the know. year I got okay. here, so I'm, but, okay. you know, my work is that great. <laughs> so, so she served as an elder uh, in our church, uh, in the Presbyterian Church. We consider that an ordained uh, position, um, very similar to a ministerial position, but with just a different role, different kind of role. And uh, she served a couple of terms already on our, as an active uh, elder on our session, our church board. Um, it's been a joy for me over the years to witness, uh, first of all, her personal uh, journey of faith, uh, but also uh, the journey of her educational pursuits that has led her now to uh, be engaged in a Ph.D. program with the Integral Institute of California. Did I get that right? California Institute of Integral Studies. That's it. That's, that's it. The that's, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> and almost finished, right? You've uh, no. I, I, I got my last two classes this coming semester. Yeah. But then it's yeah. a long process. Yeah, I worked on mine for 10 years. So, so yeah. <laughs> right. So give me a little slack. <laughs> um, but I've also greatly enjoyed witnessing her quest to discover and enact a work, a ministry, a service to the community and to the world um, that fit with her spiritual, intellectual, and creative uh, impulses. And um, so glad that she has now uh, agreed to serve as our spiritual resourcing coordinator um, in our church. Uh, this is part of our ministry initiative as well. Um, among other things, uh, she'll be organizing our spiritual resources. We have a great library and great videos, books, and all kinds of stuff, but it's not uh, organized very well at this point. And she's going to make, be making those resources available to us. Um, the little insert you have in your bulletin today is an example of that that she put together so that you see what we have and you have uh, resources and connections to uh, to great spiritual resources in our community. She's also going to be organizing a digital library, uh, our, our digital magazine for our uh, church to get the word out to the larger world about what we're doing here. And she'll also be coordinating major conferences, uh, um, especially ones that uh, involve a conversation between science and religion um, over the next few years as well. So a lot of great things coming down the road, and I really appreciate uh, Teresa being part of that and part of our ministry team uh, here at Christ Presbyterian Church. So, I'm going to give you a charge, and then charge, and then <laughs> Andy's going to um, say a prayer, and we're going to invite everybody to come up and participate in that. So, Teresa, I charge you uh, to smile, to laugh, <laughs> to, laugh. <laughs> to, to allow yourself the joy of your calling. I charge you to allow your heart's cry to guide you to your calling, and your deep gladness to guide you to the world's deep need. I charge you to trust the one who calls you and to trust the one in you who heeds the call. I charge you to let the beauty of what you love be what you do. And I charge you to serve the people of this communion always with an eye to the larger, wider community of humanity and earth and cosmos. I charge you to be Teresa among us and to share your love with us and allow us to share ours with you. And may the peace of Christ be with you. So we are going to lay hands on uh, Teresa in a, 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 a form of prayer. And uh, you, uh, Andy's going to say the prayer, but anyone who wants to is welcome to come forward and participate uh, in this prayer. Laying on hands. This is the creepy part of the service. <laughs> Anybody even, want to come? And even play even call it creepy, I just call it powerful. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Yeah, that's a better interpretation. <laughs> If you guys come from a Pentecostal background, this is where all the power goes out. We can sound all into Teresa. <laughs> in the Presbyterian tradition, this is just where we as a person set a turn you over to God. I like that. Yeah, I know. I always get nervous with the power going out. <laughs> my, hands are, my hands are freezing. Anybody want to warm me up? <laughs> Lord of Restoration. Thank you for inviting us to be participants in your kingdom of love. Today we call upon your divine wisdom to guide the path of your beloved, Teresa Westman. Holy Spirit, lead all of us as we care for your anointed servant. Grant each of us the words of encouragement to offer this brave woman. Prepare the hearts of the people who will be blessed through her ministry. 
as your faithful servants, teach us the power of compassion, the knowledge of love, and the wisdom of sound mind. Allow her ministry to comfort the weary, strengthen the faithful, and empower our community. Through the infinite love of Christ, amen. 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 <laughs> so let me invite the children to come, and we'll do our passing of the feast. Oh, look at her. <laughs> Not sure about that. Charlie, you want to come up and pass the piece, buddy? What do you think? All right, Charlie, it's just me. So I gave Pat the uh, morning off. <laughs> Actually, he said, um, when he was planning this, this service, he said, well, would you like to give the sermon? And I said, sure, why not? So I am a little nervous. Bear with me, you know, and... Um, Pat's a master at sitting here on the stool and like involving everybody in conversation. <coughs> so we'll, we'll just see how this goes, right? Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to do actually is ask for a show of hands. How many of you know that Epiphany, which was celebrated officially in the church calendar year yesterday, is a commemoration of the story of the Magi, or the wise men, visiting and honoring the young baby or the young child, Jesus? Yeah, lots of people. Right? This is like, okay, good. So we all went to Sunday school way back when, and we heard the story. And so that, that, is, that is what Epiphany is. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what do you think is the religious significance of Epiphany, the meaning of the story? Do you think it's literally about three kings coming to give gold, frankincense, and myrrh to a boy king? Or maybe could it be something else? Is it possible? Well, the story of the Magi that we read as the second reading that Pat read a few moments ago was from Matthew, and scholars believe that Matthew was written more than 50 years after Jesus' death by a Jewish author writing to a Jewish group of Christ followers. Each of the Gospel writers have a different orientation, um, a different audience in mind, and it's widely understood that Matthew's focus was framing the story of Jesus as the Jewish Messiah. The late first century Jewish Christian experience of Jesus, framed in Jewish terms, was what the Gospel of Matthew really is all about. Now, it's interesting to me um, that the story of the Magi only appears in Matthew. It doesn't show up in the other Gospels. What that means to me is that the point of the Magi coming to find the baby Jesus under the moving star is a story uniquely designed for a Jewish audience. One thing we know from Jewish uh, scriptures is that the Jewish people, or the Israelites, they were the chosen people of God. From their point of view, they had a unique covenant with Yahweh that ensured their unique relationship with the divine. So given this, that the story of Epiphany, or the story of the Magi finding the baby Jesus under the moving star, is a story for Jewish Christians who have a special covenanted relationship with the divine, what might that signify? What might that mean? Biblical, biblical scholars who have uh, considered exactly these points generally believe the significance of the story of Epiphany, the significance of the Magi finding Jesus to honor him, has to do with signaling something very special and unique about Jesus the Christ's ultimate significance and meaning for non-Jews, for the Gentiles. The Magi were wise. They had resources, they were from far away, and they were not Jewish. If wise, resource, rich men from far away come to honor a Jewish Messiah, what does that mean? Well, I think it means that Jesus as Christ is bigger than Judaism. And I think it means that Jesus as Christ transcends even the divine covenant Israel has with God. It even means that Jesus as Christ is bigger than Christianity. What is bigger than Christianity? Jesus as Christ. Now I'm going to pause here for a minute because I think it's possible I've just said something that needs to be clarified. You see, when I say Jesus as Christ, I mean something very specific. Jesus was a historical person. That much seems clear. Followers of Jesus, however, had certain divine experiences involving his life, his work, his ministry, his death, and even his presence after death. 
as a community, these followers shared these things. They talked about them, they wrote about them, and they tried their darndest to interpret them, to find meaning in them. Quite frankly, it perplexed them. But they couldn't shake the reality of them. They couldn't forget about their conviction that somehow, some way, this person of Jesus seemed to them to be a unique mixture of the divine and the human. He seemed to have all the regular characteristics of a man, of a human being, yet he was also a physical manifestation of the divine. He was both fully human and fully divine. And it was just this perplexing conviction that Jesus was both divine and human that came to be understood by the first Christians as the incarnation, the mystery of the ultimate truth of how the spiritual can be totally infused in the physical. The mystery of how the divine and the physical worlds are not separate at all. And this, this perplexing, paradoxical, mysterious, yet wonderful conundrum, that's what became Jesus as Christ, or the Christ mystery, or the eternal Christ, or Christ consciousness. So Jesus was a human being, but recognition that Jesus was somehow both fully human, and yet a full manifestation of the divine, that is the mind-blowing incarnational concept of Christ. And this concept is bigger than Jesus' Jewishness. It's bigger than religion. It's an ultimate truth about the reality of our experience. Our physical experience, experiential reality is infused with spirituality, and our spirituality is deeply grounded in our physical experience. And I'm going to take this even one step further. We're invited to participate as full participants in this crazy concept. We're invited to approach our lives as if they might also be reflections of both full humanity and full divinity. We're invited to a higher perspective, to a unitive consciousness. And it's that Christ, that eternal Christ, that Christ as mystery, that cosmic Christ, that Christ as invitation, that's bigger than Christianity. It's that Christ that the Gospel writer of Matthew has the Magi coming to adore. It's the cosmic Christ, or the eternal Christ, that the Magi, the non-Jews, the Gentiles, come to give gifts to. It's this larger than religion, larger than Christianity Christ that merits our attention. So, I'm really incredibly honored today to be installed as your spiritual resourcing coordinator. That sounds like a mouthful. <laughs> but I want to spend a few minutes and tell you what that means to me. In a nutshell, what that means to me is that I'm here to find us all resources, you and myself included, that lead us to this bigger picture of Christ that lead us to seeing the mystery of this crazy, weird, paradoxical combination of humanity and divinity and divinity and humanity as the ultimate truth, both of who Jesus was, but also who we are, and who we are invited to ex express ourselves as every day and every minute. I'm here to help us all find resources for the journey into the higher perspective of unitive and <coughs> mystical consciousness. Now, for those who know me a little bit, you know that I have, well, more than a passing book fetish. I personally have over 2,000 books, and I'm not kidding. Um, most of them spiritual, philosophical, and psychological. Um, they are complete with handmade Library of Congress spine labels. Yes, <laughs> I'm a little crazy. Okay, full disclosure, right? But my point is that I love resources. I love to find materials, books and videos, quotations that are helpful for the spiritual journey. I have a passion for spiritual um, and psychological transformation. They go hand in hand. And my focus is to figure out ways to be of service to any of you who want resources for your place in your own unique journey. Here are things this means on a practical level. And Pat already has covered this. Um, I'm going to get the two church libraries that we have in order. We have two collections. One was gifted to us from the Isthmus Institute. It has some comparatively rare items that I will get inventoried and cataloged. 
Uh, the other has a lot of great stuff. It's perhaps a slightly more accessible. Um, so I'll be working on these two library resources to make them easier for everyone to use. Another thing this means on a practical level is I would like to take the wonderful spiritual resourcing material that Pat generates every week for church services and every month in the newsletter and put it in a digital magazine format. Uh, we have many folks who think of Christ Church as their church home, but are only with us on a seasonal or part-time basis. If we could stay in touch with everyone in a user-friendly way, providing spiritual resources on a regular basis through a digital magazine, I think that would be a great way to grow spiritually and also a pretty neat way to grow as a community as well. Because community isn't defined by just who's physically here, but community can be defined in a broader sense. A third practical application will be a conference this summer, uh, Pat mentioned, trying to get together contemporary scientific and spiritual themes. We have some good ideas about how to approach this. The conference will mostly start small this coming year, but we think Telluride and our community of very sophisticated friends and members will be an ideal venue to explore this fascinating and dynamic theme. Finally, we all know Pat is our spiritual resourcing coordinator in chief, and Andy is a wonderful addition as our associate pastor, but I will be here to offer support. If, if there are things about your own personal spiritual journey you'd like to talk about, I want you to be free, free to come to me and I will help you find materials that speak to your questions and your concerns, whatever they might be. And in the spirit of our cosmic Christ, in the spirit of the Christ mystery, in the spirit of the eternal Christ, our resources may come from any of the perennial wisdom traditions that elevate love and seek higher non-dual perspective and that honor the journey each of you find yourselves on. It is my joy and life blessing to be part of this wonderful family of fellow journeyers. Thank you so much for letting me accompany you. Thank you.